Frickin' aeroplanes. <laughs> you know, when you don't hack the stupid things, they're late. That's all I'm going to say. All right. So, what do we got? We've got an hour or so, haven't we? So this is not going to be a technical, technical talk. If you're expecting me to have conversations about... Did we just turn it? There we go. If we're going to have a conversation about breaking ships or airplanes or anything else like that, this is not the one today. So this is actually something very different. It's a bit more of an introspective conversation. Um, as it says, we're going to have a little bit of a conversation about a number of different things. So for those of you, how many of you don't know me here? Can I bypass this? <laughs> yes, okay. I've pretty much have broken anything and everything and I've annoyed most agencies. Oh, yeah, look, to drink is an understatement. Normally I have the whiskey suitcase. Thankfully I did not bring the whiskey suitcase, so otherwise I'd probably be still stuck at the frickin' airport. So here's the other players in today's conversation. Um, about, a year, about a year ago, a year and change ago, I ended up looking after a good friend's um, Dane. And they were going through some problems. So I ended up taking over this year-old Great Dane that was like about, I've never actually... And I've had a dog once before when I was a kid, and I've had exes who have had dogs that I've kind of looked after for a while, but they're exes and they don't count. But this time around, this was, we, we uh, rescued the smaller one there, uh, Daisy, who's about 125 pounds. And then about four months later, we got a phone call from the people that vetted us to say, hey, we have another dog, are you interested? And we're like, well, you know, maybe. So a four-month-old puppy turned up. The four-month-old puppy is now a year old and 150 pound. Um, we also have a snack-sized dog, literally a chew toy. Um, and this is really about them, and it's about the conversations and thoughts around by them. And so this is the logic behind this. As an industry, we have our own share of challenges. A number of us have stood up and talked about it. A number of people over this weekend will probably do two more talks about it. But as everybody probably knows, I tend to rant about it rather a lot. This isn't about the industry. And as I said, here's your get out of jail free card. If you wanted to have a conversation about breaking shit, you're welcome to leave. If you want to just carry on having nice conversations and whiskey, we can stay. Here's me. I'm broken. A lot of us in this industry probably arguably are a little broken in one way, shape, form or another. But here's the difference and here's the challenge. I don't need somebody to come and fix me or analyze me. I sure as hell don't want somebody to give me a freaking pep talk. That really doesn't work. Taser, maybe, pep talk, no. Um, I don't need more bad advice. I've, I've had my fair share. Did I break it? I've shared quite a lot of it publicly. But what I do need and what I was looking for and what the dogs have kind of brought is this whole somebody or something to be there. Somebody to have my six. A lot of us are former military, former intel. And for me, when I had a team around me, I didn't care. It was a family. The dogs kind of brought that. And for me, it was also somebody to share things with, the biscuits and everything else. But here's the thing, for those of you that know me, know that I've got other people. But this is really what I wanted. Um, somebody to cuddle up and hug up with every now and again. And here's a caveat that goes with that, though. A lot of us probably want the same thing, but the big one on here is I took probably six months to figure out whether it was the right thing to do. Having not owned dogs before, and having looked after this 130, 140-pound Dane before, and seen the size of the piles it leaves in the fucking garden every five minutes and going, do I really want to deal with this for seven, eight, nine years of a dog's life? There are poop services, by the way. <laughs> they don't charge much, and it's really useful. And the amount of dog food this bloody thing eats, and the amount of slobber it leaves at every single surface around the house. And I'm like, do I really want this? And they're like, yes, absolutely. And then I'm like, shit, I travel all the time. How am I going to deal with this? And I'm like, I've got a daughter. I've got other people in my life. I've got people that look after me. But the difference is, this isn't their fight. This was something I wanted to do for me. And so it's kind of like, okay, how do we do this? Is this something I can balance? And back to that reasoning thing. 
Back to the things that we do on a regular basis, but sometimes we don't necessarily do it until after we've left off the freaking cliff. I'm one of those people sometimes. So, this is a reflective look over 12 months worth of fun and games with the dogs. After 12 months, holy shit, they can see right into your soul. This is one of the biggest things for me. Be true to who you really are. In our industry, in the work that we do, in the way we present ourselves, sometimes we put personas on, sometimes, I mean, there are all sorts of people, and you know, the purple beard and the crazy shit. Normally I've got a kilt on, but going through security today, I'm like, let's take it easy. <laughs> Freedom fondles, yay. But it was like, okay, I need to be true to who I am. If I'm going to do this, how can I do this? And this one, Daisy especially, really looks into the soul. Milo, he doesn't really look into the soul. As long as you've got a chew toy, or in my case, these two bracelets that I have in my hand, I am the chew toy. He's pretty good. The intelligence. This is an interesting one. Again, for how many of you have had kids or got kids or pets? I mean, really, it kind of counts the same way at the moment. This is interesting. For what we do and how we do, how can we explain it in such a way that these guys understand it? How do we explain the work that we do? How do we explain the life and the world that we live in and we're bringing up in a way that these guys get it, the same way that we can do it to the same with the kids? For us, it's the intelligence side of it. We have that intelligence. We have that ability. We have the knowledge of our own industry. And for so many years, we held on to that knowledge. Now, the challenge for all of us is how do we impart that knowledge to everybody else? One of the biggest issues we have, and Kathy's here with us as well because she and I did a talk, was talking about communication to different people in the organizations. We've not been good at it. Get a dog, it's amazing how quickly you actually get used to trying to communicate with the damn things. This is one of the other things I learned as well by watching them. I am used to leaping off the cliff and figuring shit out on the way down. But watching these guys, it's crazy. Observe, orient, decide, and then act. Most of the time. The puppy will occasionally just act anyway and then hope for the best. <laughs> Daisy, who is, we rescued her, she was four years old. She's now just turned five. She will sit there and plan and figure this stuff out. And then she acts and she's mean. <laughs> And chase. We don't have any squirrels, we don't have many rabbits, and the cats leave us alone now. This is great. Holy shit, this has been awesome. If I could take these guys on pen tests, <laughs> the rest of our social engineering skills would just go out of the window. I mean, we have funny feet, we have colored beards, we have pipes that we use, we have hands full of shit. No, just take a damn dog. It's easy. I was at a, a march, um, a ruck march, for charity this last weekend, and I took Milo with me, and he's now yeah, about 145, 150 pounds. He was like the star of the show. you got all these SF guys all big and tough, and that's it. The freaking babies around this thing. It was cute as all hell to see. And with that comes this. This is also something we're not good at doing. As humans... We get in our own comfort zone, we get in our own rut, we get in our way of doing life, and we don't always like stepping outside of that comfort zone. Yet when you take a step back, and especially this lunatic who saw snow for the first time in Colorado, he just plowed straight in, started eating it. It's like a shovel, it just kind of went along and there's this trowel of drool and snow throughout the rest of the house. But as humans, we're not good at doing that. We like to sometimes, even though we in our own industry are good at breaking rules, we don't necessarily step outside of the comfort of those ones that we want to break. But how can we mentally challenge ourselves to maybe look at things a little differently and take different experiences? This one's probably one of my favorites and also one of my challenges. I like my Vibrams. Milo likes my Vibrams. I locked my Vibrams in a room. Milo figured out how to open the stupid room. I put the Vibrams on the shelf. He figured out how to knock down a suitcase, stand on the stupid thing, and still get to the ruddy Vibrams. <laughs> so we have cut 
to a bit of a war and peace thing. The blue ones, which he likes, I now have two pairs. He gets one pair, and occasionally I get the other pair. But again, try, try again, try something different. As pen testers, one of the things we always used to do to train people and to test people, we would put them in front of a building and say, give me 10 different ways to get into that building. Some people will be like, well, front door, back door, window, shit, I'm stuck. Train the fucking squirrels to come in through the roof and steal the keys and come out through the front door. I don't care what you do. But take a different, sorry, where's we bands in here? Um, I will try to restrict the language, I apologize. Gosh darn it all to heck. <laughs> Try to think about things from a different perspective. Interviews. Um, one of the things we always used to do with interviews, I normally have a, if I'm not drinking whiskey, I've normally got a cup of tea in my hand. I would put that cup of tea down on a table, and each one of you test yourself this way. I would put the cup of tea down on a table, and then I'd ask the person I was interviewing, give me 10 ways to get the tea out of that cup. Just 10 ways. It would be amazing how many people in our industry or wanting to be in our industry couldn't get past five or six different ways. So each one of you, just test yourself. Put a cup down in front of you and figure out 10 different ways to get the tea out of that cup. I don't care wild, hair-brained, ass about face, turn gravity off, whatever you want to do, but figure out different ways of doing it because that's exactly what that bugger did to get to my damn Vibrams. This one. Kathy and I gave this talk. This is an updated version. How to communicate with a 145 pound puppy that also likes your daughter's shoes. And try to explain that no, they shouldn't be eating the whatever the hell Madden-ish chewy yum. Apparently Steve Madden makes really chewy shoes. <laughs> but the big one here, again, dealing with the Woofma, there's no subtlety, there's no there's no passiveness, there's nothing like that. Be upfront, be truthful, but communicate effectively. Something we should all learn. Now, for those of us that came out of the military, this is another version of that. <laughs> I'll let you read it while I have a quick slurp. <laughs> Fricking toilet rolls. This idiot in front of you, you know the kitchen towels, the toilet holes? Yeah, we played with those. Those were fun to play with. Then he realized that inside a toilet roll is exactly the same cardboard freaking tube. And they're dotted all over the house. And he can help himself. So he did. There are numerous pictures of this. Again, as our industry sees the day, He's the night, whatever analogy you want to use on this one. This is our industry. Make it, have some fun with it. Do some interesting stuff with it. This was a fun one. And this is, you know, a lot of people talk to me about how to get into the industry. For me, it's find the passion. Find something that interests you. Find out what you want to do. There's villages around the corner here. There's all sorts of interesting stuff. Get involved and just do shit. Break it. Figure out how you broke it, make it again, and then break it in an entirely different way. As it says, try again. As you might notice, he has one of my Vibrams again. He, this, I think, was, I don't remember. There's so many freaking times he's got my Vibrams, it's not even funny. I found them buried in the garden. I feel like I need to put those little tracking things on the damn things these days. This is a big one. We all screw up. Take that responsibility. We all like it when we get praised. Hey, you did an awesome job. Well, thank you. But sometimes we need to put our own hand up and go, hey, we screwed up. We got something wrong. I learned from it, and I want to share it. That's the other big one. Again, for those of you that follow me on LinkedIn, I put a lot of stuff out. And I'll occasionally put my hand up and go, look, I goofed up. 
I screwed up. I did it with the owl stuff. I've done it with the aviation stuff. I've done it with a number of other things. The logic here is I want everybody else to learn from that and make entirely different mistakes. If we all did that, we might be in a better place. This is a biggie. I like to think of myself as being able to multitask. But let's be honest, more often than not, we're kind of fooling ourselves. We're really good at spreading ourselves really thin on lots of different things. Watching these guys, one task, one thing, one thing at a time. And it's amazing how much stuff they get done. Some of it's a little destructive. <laughs> Some of it is pretty amazing. But there's no procrastination. There's no faffing around. There's just, I've got a job to do. I'm going to bloody well get on and do it. We could learn a lot from that. <sighs> Again, a lot of us hide behind something, a shield. There are sometimes, sometimes you just got to say, fuck it, screw it, sod it, whatever other language you want to use. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> Damn it. Trip the light fantastic through the mall, through the business. Through, who gives a damn? But be true to yourself. You know, we talk a lot in this industry about mental health. And I think a lot of it, or some of it, is because we're not always true to ourselves. We try to fit, we try to conform, we try to do the right things. When we come to Circle City Con and other conferences, we get to do crazy stuff every now and again for a couple of days. If that's not working, and if it isn't a good enough of an outlet, then maybe take that step back and go, what, am I, what can I do differently? For me, I know what I figured out. I used to train. I trained for the Olympics for hammer throwing, and I did pretty well at it. And then I took a break. I got older. My body was like, screw you. You can't carry 320 pounds weight, and neither can you push you know, squatting 1,200 or something. Yeah. And the body was like, nope, can't do it. So I took a break, and then work got in the way, and everything else got in the way. And then mentally, I just went gadoosh off the freaking cliff for about four or five years. Beginning of this year, after having these guys and watching these guys for about six months, I'm like, you know what? I need to change. I realized that I'm not happy with myself, and I realize it needs to be a me thing. So I started working out again. Several times a week, I leave my phone in the damn car, and I go hit the gym. Phone stays in the car. I use a flipping iPod shuffle. I went low tech, because nobody can get me on freaking Bluetooth. Nobody can ping me. My, I don't even have a stupid Apple, phone, Apple Watchy thing. It's simple. I took time for me to do what I wanted to do my way. I go to the gym in my sodding pajamas and a scruffy t-shirt, and there's everybody there founcing around the latest bloody Lululemon or whatever the hell. I'm like, no, that's not who I am. So be true to yourself. This one I like. We talk about it in our industry. I lecture on it. You're going to get your ass handed to you. You're going to get breached. Get a plan. Well, the same thing applies in human life with dogs. <laughs> you can really try to get everything right, and then shit goes wrong. In the case of the bottom right-hand side, that was, uh, that was Theo, the one that we were looking after. Left him alone for a little bit. He ate his bed. Daisy did the same thing, but she ended up actually eating one of the chairs. She ate the cushion, half of one of the arms, which was wood, um, one of the legs and a few other bits. Yeah, kind of cool. Um, management failure. Can't blame the dog. Management failure. Take responsibility. Something we don't do. Patience. Oy vey. And I'm one of the worst. I am more than happy to taser somebody at a moment's notice. Actually, it's kind of fun to do. Especially the new ones that have got three prongs. You can get people to hold hands with those. They're quite fun to do. But this is awesome. Patience is key. It's amazing to watch the dogs and see how they work, how patient they can be, how damn determined and steely-eyed they can be, especially when there's bacon or peanut butter Girl Scout cookies involved. <laughs> Either one of those, and it's fair game, and I know I'm going to lose. It's just how long I can hold out for. 
So let's take a look at the human aspect. This was from the dog's aspect. Is everybody doing okay so far? Everybody all right with this? Kind of number. We can break stuff as well, I promise. If we've got five minutes left at the end, we'll hack the hotel or something. <laughs> so this is the human aspect. This is looking at it from our perspective. So in working and watching the dogs, three dogs, two big ass damn dogs and one snack. As far as everybody's concerned, they're all the same. The snack-sized dog thinks she's about the same size as the big one, and the big one apparently wants to be a lap dog. <laughs> but they accept each other for who they are. For the strengths that they bring, for the weaknesses that they have, they accept them for that. Why can't we do the same? What is the challenges and why do we not have that same capability? Each one of us, I challenge you, change. This one, especially our industry, the importance of boundaries. Oh yeah, haven't we had some discussions on this over the years? So let's just keep it simple. We all need to recognize boundaries. We all need to communicate those boundaries, and we all need to be able to be respectful of those boundaries. Needless to say, these are the two wolf mutts helping me do some typing the other day. Not quite boundary recognition, especially when you end up with slime all over the keyboard. So, this follows on from the first one. I think in our industry we're better than most, but as humans, we have a lot to do. I noticed when I took Milo uh, to the ruck march, there were a bunch of folks in wheelchairs, there were a bunch of folks who had been blown to bits, and there were bits missing that they'd probably left in the sandbox and various other places. He didn't give a shit. He just went up to everybody, wanted an ear scratch, wanted to say hi, wanted to leave a little slobber trail. We need to take a leaf out of that. This one is huge, especially when dealing with a 145 pound dog. For me, I have no problem when he jumps up on me, I've got no problem when he wrestles me, I've got no issues with that. But that's me. I have a problem if he was to jump up on somebody else. I sure as hell have a problem if he decides he wants to arm wrestle my daughter or anything else like that, let alone friends in the neighborhood. So I have to be able to communicate effectively with him what he's allowed to do, and how he's allowed to do it. And I do it typically with sign language. And I do it a lot with nonverbal communications, with cues, with positive reinforcement. I go through more freaking snacks and dog chews than I care to think of. But the only person he jumps up on is me. The only times he does it is when I pat my chest or when I do this or a few other things. The only times he wrestles is when I put my arm up and I beckon to him, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We've learned these things. So all of us need to learn the cues and everything else as we work inside our own world. The social engineering world is huge on this one. You look at, I mean, Laris is out there. You look at what Nickerson is doing. You look at what Hagnadi are doing. You look at all of these other people in our own industry who are teaching nonverbal, who are teaching social engineering skills. This is using exactly the same thing but with a 145 pound puppy. It's fun and it puts it to the test. And it's been interesting. It's one of the things we should probably all try. This is a biggie and it's a biggie for me because I get angry. I get frustrated very easily sometimes. And then I don't want to take that out on anybody or anything. How many of us have sent an email? We've gone, ah, shit, I probably shouldn't have said that. Yep, uh, yeah. Rage quit? Anybody rage quit? Yeah, okay. Maybe afterwards you should have taken that step back and gone, I, I really wanted to do it, but yeah, I probably shouldn't have done it. It's been really interesting working with the wolf mutts to work out how emotions work with them to work out how they perceive emotions, and to work out how we can put a face forward to them. And it's the same thing dealing with humans, something we should think about effectively. This is an interesting one. So 
There's a couple of reasons for throwing this one up, and it isn't just a Wolfram Up based one. I put something out on LinkedIn the other day, and no, I didn't bring a friend with me to this conference, but I went to Rocky Mountain InfoSec next week. But this is really, I put something out, and I'm like, hey, we all need to get out there. We all need to help. This is an industry that has to grow, and we have to bring the next generation along. And somebody responded to me going, well, I can't remember what the heck it was. It was like, I don't get out of my cave, and I don't go to conferences. And this is somebody who's actually pretty well, you know, pretty good in the industry. And I challenged them. I'm like, one, you're a pain in the ass because you have all this knowledge and you're not sharing it. And secondly, get out of your own freaking head. Come to these kinds of places and talk with people. Listen to people. Get a different perspective. I was at a, an industry conference the other day. And they were bemoaning about the fact there weren't enough people in the industry. I'm like, how many of you have gone down the unemployment line and walked up and down the unemployment line saying, hey, do we have any pipe fitters? Do we have any plumbers? Do we have any 50, 60-year-old flooring people? Why don't we bring them into the industry? Totally different perspective. We can teach the tech. No problem. That's easy shit to teach. The drive. And the fact that my microphone goes out every now and again. It's the person, the drive that we're looking for. I, one of my best friends works on the railways. Similar age to me, a couple of years younger than I am. Big Nebraska boy. Big Nebraska boy. But he and I have collaborated on breaking so much shit, it's not even funny. And the amazing thing is, his perspective has helped hugely. So my challenge again to everybody here is get out, get involved, stay involved, and talk to people who aren't in our industry about what we do in a language that they understand. Not that we're comfortable with, but that they understand. All right. Heart of the matter. It's where the soppy stuff comes in. The need for a good hug. It's hard to me. Yeah, that wasn't really a hug. That's more of a smother. <laughs> That's the recovered chair after Daisy decided to eat the damn thing. Ended up giving it to somebody and saying, can you repair this? And he's like, what bits? <laughs> but this is huge for me. Again, you know, we all have our own demons. Um, and for me, being able to hang out with him, and Daisy especially, and just curl up with them for 20 seconds, the world just goes away. And it's amazing how easy it is to face it afterwards, even if you are a little bit slobbered up. This is one I fail at on almost a daily basis, given the fact that I think I finished doing stuff this morning at about 3 o'clock and the alarm went off at... I think 6 o'clock for a plane that actually didn't leave until 9 o'clock. Seriously. Most of it, how many of you feel you get enough sleep in this industry? You do? I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't love you now. None of us. So again, put yourself first. This is one of these times when we have to be selfish. Because if we're not... We're not going to succeed. We will burn out, have issues, mental and physical, and it sucks. When I used to have Al, they would find me curled up under the table sometimes. I take power naps under my table. Not the best thing to do, but it really worked. But it is definitely one of those things I've learned from the wolf mutts that it's really nice sometimes just to curl up and ignore the world for 30 seconds or a couple of minutes in this case. That's my daughter's area. That is a six-foot beanbag, by the way. <laughs> yeah. And that's the smaller of the two. She's, um, she claims that as hers, and if she doesn't take that over, in the room that's over here is the spare room. She'll curl up on the spare bed, and the, do the doofus one will turn up on that one. Oh... I question myself probably this on a daily basis. And it makes me horribly and terribly respect the hell out of them. That their love and what they do and how they care is absolutely unconditional. They don't care if you've had a good day, a bad day. They 
They will listen to the ends about your clients and the reports and the crap that you got to deal with. And they will just sit there and they'll listen. Now, you will have to pay them with a Girl Scout cookie or something as well. But they'll listen. And the other thing they do, and they've taught me a fair amount, is this. I'm still a long way from being able to say, I know what the hell I'm doing here. But it is, sorry, I know, I keep walking in front of that bloody thing. It's only to annoy Adrian. Adrian's gone. He's given up, hasn't he? He just, <laughs> Adrian just, fuck it. <laughs> I do this deliberately to annoy him sometimes. It's fun. I also can't stand still and talk. I, I, I don't know how many people can. But anyway, this is a biggie. And it's back to that saying thank you. How many of you fly regular basis, semi-regular basis? A lot of us. When you get off the airplane, do you just stick your head into the cabin and say, hey, thank you? Just stuff like that. Thanks to the stewardesses, thanks to the people. Just that continual, just like, hey, thank you for helping, thank you for being there. One of the things that frustrates the hell out of me about people in general is we tend to think in hierarchical structures. I came from a country that had hierarchy. My father was military and he was enlisted. So as far as anybody else was concerned, he was on the bottom. I dated, when I was a kid, I dated an officer's daughter. That did not go down well with the father. You're dating an enlisted boy? <laughs> yeah, not pretty. We're thinking hierarchies. And as adults, we tend to do the same thing to stop that. The person that empties the rubbish bin at night is the same person and the same person that serves you food should have the same equality and the same equity stake as leadership and anybody else. We're all freaking equal. People didn't empty your rubbish, we'd soon get into trouble. Treat everybody the same. Now, that goes away when the senior leadership person says, oh, we don't need security. You are allowed to take them out back and taser them. <laughs> if you can get them in a swimming pool and then taser them, you get double points. Yeah, paddling pools are awesome. I will occasionally carry a paddling pool with me just for that reason. This is a biggie. Live every moment. So, the dogs I have, as you see, I've unfortunately chosen a breed of dog that lasts seven, eight, maybe nine years, which is going to suck. So I want to make sure I enjoy it. But and I want to make sure they do too. But it's also for us. Um, as humans, I've been very fortunate in life that I've done a lot of things. I've, I've gone to the stage and I've done so much stuff that if I do get run over by the proverbial red bus, I won't sit there and go, I wish I'd have done something. I'd be like, hey, I gave life a pretty freaking good shot. Each one of you introspectively needs to take a look and go, hey, how much on my wish list have I done and how much am I putting off and what could I do? Again, the selfish moment. You deserve it, you earn it, freaking take it. Because something's going to happen some point in time. And if you sit there and go, I wish more often than you go, I did, you need to look in the mirror a little bit. Which goes into this one. Live life. Circle City Con is a good example of that. We get together. This is family. Extended family. Dysfunctional family. <laughs> but it's still family. And we all need to look after each other. Welling up a bit, sorry. One of my favorite ones. <laughs> So this is a rare picture, probably one of only the few times I will ever have a picture of my daughter on there, and she's a little bit blurred out. But for me, this is one of the things I teach her. Again, be true to yourself, and to some degree, screw what everybody else thinks. Kids grow up enough with the amount of peer pressure and social pressure they have, so it's our job to try to teach them to not succumb to that all to the time. I want a hug. Get your get your hands off me. Yeah. Screw you all for a second. <laughs> yes, so good. Hello. Oh. oh, good to see you. You too. Oh. Thank you. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> We're good. Okay, bye-bye. <sighs> okay. This is another big one. And this is, you know, I've, I'm doing this now. This is, goes back to what I was talking about training. Phone stays in the car. End of discussion. On Saturdays especially. So I'm only here today. I leave this evening. Why? Because my daughter's getting picked up at 7.30 this evening. And it's my week with her. I love you guys. But I kind of want to spend time with her. Kind of extended family, blood family, all that kind of good stuff. Eventually, she's going to bugger off and I'll be left with you guys again. So you'll be have to deal with me. But for now, that's what I want. <sighs> okay. <laughs> comfort food. No, the snack dog is not comfort food for the big dog. <laughs> Although, it is interesting how often the my... <laughs> I'll see Daisy wandering around every and again with this kind of like half dazed look and she's not drunk, she's just got slobber all over here. Because he'll sit there and he'll lick her a few times and then just kind of gently tries to groom her head and like gnaws on it a little bit. <laughs> she's just like, the hell's going on? The lights keep going on and off. As it says, comfort food, it's good, embrace it. That was the chair before we had to recover it. Needless to say, it's a different pan. This is a reality check. This is a big one. Again, not having had, especially big ass damn dogs, I kind of didn't know what I was letting myself in for. Yeah. Then went through the first winter, and the first time the muddy paws went from the door all the way in, down the white carpet, onto the bed, I'm like, oh. <laughs> by the tenth time it happened, I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> I went from having one of those stupid little Roombas to now having three Roombas. And a cleaner that comes in twice a week. <laughs> and somebody that picks up the poo three times a week. You just got to pick the battles. And again, as people in our industry, you know, there's books out there that don't sweat the small stuff and reality checks and everything else. But this is so true. And especially in the work that we do, you know, there are so many things that we have to deal with, that we have to try to focus on, that we have to try to prioritize, that we have to, should do, need to, care about. You can't fix everything. Pick the battles, pick the ones that are low-hanging fruit, get a couple of those out of the way. Pick the ones that you care about, that matter the most, that protect the humans. But, you know, there is a book out there, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, and I hate to say it, it's got some use. This, this is huge. How many of you have got pets? This is huge for me. It's, it's really interesting. Um, Daisy did not come from a good, a good home. That's Trixie, by the way, actually pinning me down. Um, but Daisy didn't come from a good home. We're not sure where she came from, but she didn't have a good first four years of life. And it's taken her literally a year to figure us out. But now, she's like, yeah, you're my humans, I've got you covered. Um, this is my chair, that is my stove, and I'll get three square meals a day, I got you covered. And it's amazing how much we get mirrored with the dogs, with moods, with attitudes, and everything else. So again, as humans, look to see how we project out. What emotions are we projecting? What are we carrying with us? What can we do differently, and how can we do it differently? Just some interesting things to consider. <sighs> it scared the crap out of me getting the dog. I didn't know what I was getting in for. I wasn't sure about it. I'm like, I'm not bad if we can do this. The hassles, the problems. The... Now, screw that all. Couldn't live without him. Could not live without him. Aside from the hugs and the slobber and the craziness, just the fact that I know when I'm away, especially when the Rugrats there, there's full protection. All of those things. And the fact that they're just there. The house is no longer just a house. It's a home. Big difference. Ah, appreciate life. The moment. Again, that selfish thing. We spend so much time rushing around. I'm one of the worst offenders, let's be honest. And occasionally we just all need to take that step back, breathe, smell whatever smell you're in. But if you're in a city, you're not smelling. 
But in this case, smell the fire hydrant. Or in Daisy's case, she's like, hey, patio furniture, thank you for buying that for me. Dunk. So wrapping it all up. This is very wordy and it is very extensive, but it is also, I put it up on LinkedIn. Um, this is actually posted by the door of the house. And it's kind of like the house rules as written by the dog. Um, that's Milo giving me a fist bump before we went on the 10K rock march. <laughs> He's like, you're the silly sod carrying the backpack. Don't even think about giving me one of those. We end up carrying food. So it was a food charity march. And for each person taking part, we took 25 pounds of food. And then for every person that we wanted to not necessarily remember, but actually have, and I had tags for two of my colleagues on my pack with me. So there were a number of us that we did the 10K with 75 pound plus packs. So he came with us and he hung out, it was good. So that's our history. For those of you that remember our history, this was 10, 15 plus years ago, the Evolvo Dive stuff came out from Packet Storm. Don't feel like we've done much evolution yet. But this needs to be our future. It's going to take all of us. It really, really is. More than we have here, more than just IT, more than just information security. And I mean all of us. Irrespective of background, race, creed, color, religion, limbs, I don't give a shit. Use the dog's analogy, look past that. Look into the heart of the person, the soul of the person, and see if they can help and how can you work with them. And it's not everybody's, you know, this isn't somebody's blame game. When we talk about security, it has to be everybody now. We have to figure out how to communicate with the C-suite, with leadership and with board. We have to be the ones that have to figure out how we talk to everybody, end users. Believe me, I am one of the first people in the queue to taser the occasional end user just for sheer necessities every now and again. But for the most part, we have really got to figure out how the hell to work with them effectively. We really do. Because the alternatives aren't that good, to be perfectly honest. Why? Well, we think it's bad. It's going to get worse, let's be honest. More apps, more connected people, many more connected devices. And unfortunately, the braking side is way too easy, way too easy. So a challenge for everybody here, when you stand up at a conference or when you go to put a talk out to a conference, you're like, I, I found a flaw, kick ass, brilliant, I'm happy. Now give me a damn solution. Give me a solution that will work in the business. Give me a solution that will work in industry, in manufacturing. Give me a solution that people will be able to deal with. Don't show me how to break shit, show me how to fix it. So, I like this one. It's my new favorite one. And I like it for a bunch of reasons, for all the obvious ones. We're in different ships, we're on the same boat. It says it all, and then this just kind of simplifies it a little bit more. As individuals, in this industry and in what we're facing, you know, the chances of us succeeding, not good. We band together, and not just IT and not just security. We work with everybody around us. When you put a solution out, it needs to not just work for the geek in the room. My mother, who's in the UK, who's in her late 70s, needs to be able to figure that shit out too. And by the way, you better be able to explain it to the damn woofmer. That is a proper solution. When we can do that, we stand a better chance of succeeding. So, as always, the final slide, along with a large 145 pound wet nose in the corner for a change rather than a squirrel. There is an absence of squirrel in these slides you might have noticed. I figured there were a lot of dogs. Questions? We got a little bit of extra time. Any questions? Or does everybody want to get the hell out of here and get alcohol? Alcohol? All right, every, oh, yeah. So sorry for missing the first half. It's okay, I, I missed the first entire conference. Poor Jeff had to fill in for me. <laughs>
Well, thanks, United. So, what are, you, you've done a lot of analogies between having a dog and having a fulfilling life. What are the one or two things you would have done differently or the road that you should have taken and you didn't? Uh, I probably would have been more true to myself. So a perfect example, I mean, the, the owl debacle and the mess that happened with World Model Labs, I wasn't true to myself. I had a really good consulting company and we were building a kick-ass kind of product with Intel and this was back in... Did I lose it again? There we go. And we went after investment money. And we took that investment money because we wanted to grow and be bigger and stronger and all that shit. I didn't stay true to myself. I didn't say, hey, look, you know, we're doing good. There's a good team. There's a good family. There were 25, 30 of us at the time. And we wanted to grow further. And I did the wrong thing. I also didn't follow my gut instinct. We took money from investors who were risk averse. This is not a risk averse world. And so we got sideways really, really quickly. So I would have definitely done that a lot differently. I learned a lot from that, and unfortunately it cost me a lot in a number of different ways. Um, something I'm wrestling with at the moment, which the dogs are really good with, but I'm wrestling with, is saying no. I'm not good at saying no. I was actually going to put a LinkedIn post out about it. I'm still trying to figure out what the hell I want to say. I'm terrible at it. Want to please everybody. There we go. There we go. Thank you. And I try to get so much done, but the problem is so much gets asked of me. And I try to say yes to everything, which means I'm failing at a lot. So I apologize in advance for anybody that's asked for help, but I'm going to start saying no a little bit more often. Because it's the only way I can succeed at the things I want to try to get done, if that makes any sense. So two key points. Yes. Oh, okay. Go for it. I feel like I'm bearing my soul here. All right, either. Yeah. <laughs> so, what is going to be your kickoff uh, kickoff presentation at Higher Ground in Las Vegas? I have no sudding clue. So, what are the one or two career tips you can give everybody? <sighs> Probably back to what the Wolf Mutt was doing. Get out, yeah, it's, it's that whole idea for me. Perfect example, when the dog first saw snow, what did the dog do? Straight into it, head first, literally head first. Mouth open, head first. It was like watching a snow plow with drool. Just got out there and said, I'm just gonna give it a try. I wanna see what it is, I wanna test it, I wanna play with it, I wanna see what I can do, I don't care especially. I mean, we get asked, a lot of us probably get asked all the time, hey, how do I get into this industry? Go break it. Go break it and then figure out how to fix it and then write about it. Put something out there. Contribute to the industry. Get your ass to these kinds of conferences, to all the B-sides, to the circles, to the girls, to the birds. Blah, 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 blah. Get out there and say hi. The gurus to the birds. <laughs> that, it's get out and be part of this family. Those are probably the easy ones. There's more. I have no clue what I'm going to talk about yet. I'll have the whiskey there with me as normal. Let's face it. Oh, it is? Yeah. You know I'm going to miss that deadline. It, it's just going to go whizzing by. Like, I, I'll, I'm going to, I'll give you alcohol now as a mea culpa. <laughs> I think my deadline... I think I was on a deadline for here at some point in time, and they just gave up on me. Rocky Mountain InfoSec wanted my slides like two weeks ago, and I still, yeah, it's life. All right, thank you very, very, very much, everybody. I'm around, I'll hang out. Thank you very much, everybody.